In this example, I'll show you how we can use neural analysis to figure out the power associated with this particular 20 volt source. So we take a look at the circuit and we have a few of the essential nodes in here. So we have this is an essential node, this is an essential node, this is an essential node, and this is an essential node, and this one here is an essential node for all, basically all three, this one, this one, this one are all essential nodes. And we have a few options to choose. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five. So technically, the number of essential nodes is five. That means we need five minus one equation. So that's four K KCL or neural analysis equation to write it. However, the choice of reference node might reduce this number a little bit. So if we choose um, this to be our reference node, um, that will make this here as a known. Okay, so let's do that. I will just choose this to be my reference node. And now I don't have to write this here because I know I don't have to write this one here because I know that this is 20 volts above the reference. So that leaves me with this node, this node, and this node. However, you should recognize by now that these two essential nodes in here are connected by a voltage source. It is a dependent voltage source, but it's a voltage source nonetheless. So what we can do is we can use super node um, equation for this. So we can use, we can write now um, minus two equations in here because one we know and one is a super node. So we need two um, nodal analysis equations to solve this circuit. And in addition, we need um, to add uh, an equation for the voltage source and an th that basically relate this voltage to this voltage and using I phi in here. All right, so let me name these voltage sources in here or voltage or nodal analysis voltages. So I'm gonna write this as a V1. Um, this will be my V2 and this will be my V3. I don't need to name this here because I know what it is and we'll start by writing, um, maybe we can start um, with the super node equation. So let's do this here. We're gonna do the super node equation. And again, remember, with the super node, yes, we do have to assign this one here as V1, this one here as V3, and we deal with them separately. So I'll start by saying, okay, let's see um, the ones around the V1. So at the, at the V1, what we have is V1 minus zero divided by 20, and then plus V1 minus 20 divided by two. These are the two resist the two um, current in here. That's the V1 divided by 20. This is V1 minus 20 divided by two. Okay, and then um, that shouldn't be the equal because we're not done yet. We have to go to the other side in here and we have to look. We have, um, I believe, one, two, and three um, different currents we need to take a look at. So the first one will be V3 minus V2 divided by four. That is this current in here. And then we have another one here, which is simply V3 divided by 80. Okay, and then the last one is something that we already know because this is just a current source. So we have that in here. Um, yes, it's a dependent current source, but who cares? So we can still just use it. So that will be 3.125 um, V delta, and that equals zero. So this current source um, depends on a V delta here. We need to identify where V delta is. V delta happened to be here. Okay, so we need to write an equation for that V delta. V delta happened to be simply this here, which is 20 volts minus V2. So that's 20 minus V2, okay? Um, and that's basically it. That's what V delta is. So now we know what V delta is. So all we have to do is just whenever we see a V delta, we just substitute it. Um, so I'm going to substitute it and clean up this equation a little bit so that we have um, just something with the V1, V2, and V3. And this equation would look something like that. So it will be 44 V1 minus 270 V2 plus 21E1 V3. Um, and 20 neg equals negative 4200 and that's basically the first equation that came from the super node so what we need to do right now is we need to write an equation um, for v2 um, so let's do that so we'll zoom out a little bit and we'll write it in here so at v2 so what we have is v2 minus 20 divided by 1 plus v2 divided by 40 plus V2 minus V3 divided by four. So the, these are the three different currents. So this is the first one, V2 minus 20 in here, V2 minus 20, and then we have V2 divided by 40, and then V2 minus V3 divided by four, and that should be equal zero. And we clean up this equation, and we'll get this equation, which is 51 V2 minus 10 V3 equals 800. 
So now we have two equations, but three unknowns. So we need a third equation. So we take a look at the diagram and we'll figure out that we wrote all nodal analysis equations. We wrote one for the super node and we wrote one for V2. And so we're done with the nodal analysis equations. So what's left is actually the constraint um, that this particular source has given us, which is we know that V1 is higher than V3 by this amount, which is thir uh, 35 I5. So let, let me just write this equation in here. So what this tells me is the constraint equation constraint equation is simply that v1 minus v3 is simply equal to 35 i phi but we know that i phi is simply from the equation is this one in here which is uh, v2 divided by 40 so we need to combine these two to get the third equation in here so by combining them we'll get that v1 minus v v1 minus uh, v3 minus 35 times V2 divided by 40 equals zero. So we clean this equation to get the third equation. And that would look something like this, which is 40 V1 minus 35 V2 minus 40 V3. All right, so now I have three equations, three unknowns. Let me just copy them and, and just arrange them next to each other. So we'll do this in here. So that here, and then we have V2. Okay, so we do that and we'll solve that. So these are the three equations that I'm looking for. Okay, we do that. And the third one, so all we have to do is just find a solution for these three equations and we'll figure out the, all the nodal voltages that we're looking for in the circuit. So let me just do that. And the solution for these three equations is that V1 is negative 20.25, V2 is 10 volts, and V3 is tw negative 29 volts. So I went ahead and then copied this um, uh, the diagram of the uh, the diagram of the, the circuit diagram in here it's just to see so what we have is we have v1 uh, we figured out what v1 is we figured out what v2 is we figured out what v3 is and just as a quick reminder at the beginning of the circuit we were asked to figure out what the power consumed by that 20 or generated by that 20 volt uh, sources so let's do that i think we have everything we need to do that so in order for us to compute the power associated with this particular source uh, one way to do that is to figure out the current going through it so what i need to do is i probably need to focus on this here or that particular node and write kcl equation to figure out that current there's no ohm's law to apply i'll focus on this one here because it's simpler because i only have three currents as opposed to this node this node will have one two three four and five currents so this one is simpler so i'll focus on that so we'll do this in here i'll assume that the current i1 is in here and i2 is leaving from here and i3 is leaving from here so the equation will be i1 plus i2 plus i3 this is basically kcl at that node equals zero but we should know by now that i1 is simply this voltage which is 20 minus this voltage divided by two so it's 20 minus v1 divided by uh, two and plus the second volt, the second current, which is I2, is just simply 20 minus the V2 divided by 1. So it's 20 minus V2 divided by 1. Uh, plus the I3 is what I'm looking for, so we'll keep it as is. That's 0, 20, um, okay. So we know what the value of V1 is, negative, negative 20.25 uh, volts divided by 2. And we know what the value of um, the V2, which is negative 10 volts divided by that, plus I3. So now all we have to do is just um, solve this equation to figure out what I3 is. And that number is I3 equals negative 30.125 amps. Okay, so we can now compute the power associated with the 20 volts. And that will be based on the passive sign convention. The current is going to the positive side. So we're going to put positive and the voltage is 20 and the current is negative 30.125. And that basically is um, uh, negative 602.5 watts. So this particular source is generating power because it's negative in here. And the exact power is 602.5 watts.